here at a scary home companion we get a lot of great emails from our listeners kind words more often than not but also ideas for stories tales of local myths from around the country sometimes a personal anecdote about something really dark the following story is one of these submissions from a listener. This man, who will remain anonymous, reached out to me with a long and rambling message. It was so long that I, I almost didn't read it. But when I started, I couldn't stop. And I found myself reading it over and over again. He said that I had permission to turn his story into an episode of the show. And I'm not going to do that in the normal way. I did not write this episode, ladies and gentlemen. I am giving you this man's story in his own words. Yes, I've changed a couple of details, I've cut and edited some stuff, and I made it a little more coherent as a narrative. But at its core, this is his story. Slippery Slope. Drinking whiskey in the kitchen and telling scary stories around the fire. Music, monsters, and mayhem, killers, cannibals, and cults, fearful fiction and furious fact, tall tales, and terrible truths. This is a scary home companion. I was taking Sheba for a walk. Sheba's my dog, and I probably shouldn't be saying any of this, but it's the three-year anniversary of it all, and it's been on my mind a lot, so why not? Me and Sheba, we're on our late-night walk, same as we do every night. Sometimes it's a few minutes, sometimes we go for an hour. It really depends on my energy level, you know what I mean? The girl, she could go for hours, but I usually can't keep up. Same as every night, I took a drink with me. This night, it was a can of beer. A tall boy, the third of the night, I think. Fourth, maybe. And yes, of course, I knew about the killings. Who didn't? It was... A nasty piece of business. Had I been female or younger, I would have worried, but as it stood, A, whoever this was was only going after younger girls, and B, Sheba is 75 pounds of muscle. I know that Australian cattle dogs aren't aggressive, but Sheba will defend her people when push comes to shove. Plus, she just looks intimidating. I never saw the point of small dogs, if I'm being honest. Big dogs, they have functionality. But what's a little dog good for? Just yipping and shitting. Anyway, anyway. Me and Sheba, we're out for our walk. It's a shade past midnight. I've got my beer in hand. And we went off the street and down the bike path because there aren't any lights down that way and I wanted the darkness. It only takes a few minutes and then my eyes were totally adjusted to the starlight and it was, it was beautiful out. We come to the end of the bike path and well, what do you know? I still got half a beer, so let's not go back just yet. We leave the path, head out through some light woods. And we've got these kind of woods all around our neighborhood. There's a series of nature trails and such. 
There are some creeks and some canals, some surrounding lowlands. Mostly it's neighborhood, but there's just a lot of green connective tissue. The trees, in any event, aren't thick enough where I need to worry about getting lost, so we just plunged straight out into the wild. I let Sheba take the lead. I controlled the speed, of course, but I let her guide the path. She was guiding for real, like she had some place in particular she wanted to go. I'm half drunk, much like now. And in the spirit of full transparency, I was fair to stoned as well. So we drift for a few hundred yards and then the ground gives way and dips down towards this pretty deep creek bed. More of a canal, really, maybe... 15, 18 feet deep, covered with thick, thigh-high grass all the way down. A little trickle of dark water running along the spine of it. Sheba started pulling real hard, running right down into it. And me, like a half-drunk, half-stone dumbass, I catch my foot and I take a header right down the incline. And at least I had the good sense to let go of the leash. I went ass over tea kettle, as they say, and I'm damn lucky that I didn't break anything, but I didn't. Came to a stop in the water run along the bottom of the canal. It was maybe a foot deep, piss warm, but it was still sobering. My head was spinning from the tumble, so it takes a few seconds before I start to see clearly. At which point, I saw the body. And I knew what it was straight away as soon as I saw it. It was a little girl. No more than 12, but... <laughs> 12 as a stretch. She was all cut up, bloody mess, laying in a heap in this trickling water. I'm not going to break down in tears recounting it for you, but it's damn upsetting seeing something like that up, up close. I remember I could see a curl of her hair, just one curl that was getting tugged at by that dark current. Her fingers were all curled up into fists, except one of them, the ring finger on her left hand, was broken and bent all the way back. Shibu was sniffing at her, and I just... I just couldn't move. Just sat there for I don't know how long and just stared at her. I thought about what I should do next. Okay, all right, I, I hear you. 
I hear you. Go call the cops. Yes, of course. That's what you would do, isn't it? Isn't it? Wouldn't you call the cops? <sighs> Me? Cops just aren't my thing, you know? I've, I've been in juvie a long time back, and in the spirit of full transparency, I've done nine months in county as an adult. By this time, you know, at this time, I was well off parole. I wasn't on probation. And it's not like my offenses were sexual or violent. But there it is. I'm a two-time loser with no love for cops. And cops got no love for me. Also, there was the other thing. In the fall, down the incline, I dropped my beer. And the half-empty beer can, covered in my fingerprints, my slobber, and my DNA, was laying right on top of the middle of that girl's body. Her blood had gotten smeared on the can. Which meant that now both of our DNA was on that can. And this... This was not good. I got up and I'm, I'm totally soaked. Waist to toe. I'm a soggy goddamn mess. I eased up to that girl's body and I plucked that beer can off of her. At this point, Sheba hears somebody coming and she started to run up that incline out of the canal, which would have presented a problem anyway. But in addition to that, I was inadvertently standing on the end of her leash and so when she ran, she yanked, my foot went with her, and I pitched forward and landed right on the body. God damn it. The luck. Am I right? If it wasn't bad, I wouldn't have any at all. Body wasn't warm, but it was... Very soft, oh, sticky. Jesus Christ, I remember it. I pushed off. I got up away from her. But at this point, I had bits and pieces of this kid all over me. The beer can was now the least of my worries. Because the transfer between her and I was huge. I was now literally all over that kid's corpse, and her forensic evidence was all over me. If I said that I wasn't starting to panic, I'd be lying. I was freaking out. I was redlining. And when I thought that shit couldn't get any worse... I hear someone in the trees. Somebody shouting, Carol? Baby? Are you here? Where are you? I look down at the kid again for something in particular this time, and I see it. The big rectangle lump in her pocket. A phone. Someone was locked in on her GPS and following her right to this spot. And I hope at this point it's pretty clear why not only could I not let this guy find me, I couldn't let him find the kid either. 
You understand that, right? So I covered my fingertips, my hand with the end of my shirt sleeve, and I gently pulled the phone out of this girl's pocket, and I threw it as far away as I could. And of course, Sheba went running after it. Jesus Christ, this doll. At this point, I'm grasping at straws, okay? I obviously wasn't thinking clearly. I was just trying to buy myself some time. So while the phone and the dog went in one direction, I grabbed the dead kid and I started running in the opposite direction. Up out of the water so that I'm not splashing around, but my sketchers are completely soaked through, so I'm squishing like a dumbass with every step. <laughs> what the fuck? One minute, I'm just taking my dog for a walk, having a beer, enjoying the night. Now I'm dragging a child's corpse down a canal. Hello? I heard the guy yelling after me. He was yelling at me, and I knew that he couldn't see me. I could tell by the sound of his voice that he couldn't see me, but he knew that I was there. So I stopped. It's very dark, and I laid down on the edge of the canal next to the girl's body. This patch of ground was really rocky, but I hold tight, and I wait. Hello? Carol, baby, it's Dad. Where are you, baby? Answer me over and over again. It was... It was heartbreaking. Yeah, uh, of course, of course it was. I, I felt for the dude. I still feel for the dude. But there was no way that I could step forward is there? What am I going to do? Um, hello, sir. Uh, here's your daughter's body, and I know I'm covered in her blood and dragging her around, but this is all just a big misunderstanding. You knew that shit wasn't going to fly. So I waited. I was still. And then... Sheba comes to the rescue. Not my rescue, of course. That goddamn dog. Who's a good dog? I heard the guy say. Come here. What do you have there, girl? Let me... Let me... Oh, no. At that point, he must have picked up the phone that my idiot dog fetched and he saw that it belonged to his daughter and he flipped out. Carol, baby, answer me. And at this point, he's really screaming. I mean, top of his lungs shit. Nothing less than what you would expect from a terrified father searching for a missing daughter. It was loud enough that I knew people were going to hear it. I, they would have to. These woods, remember, they, they aren't that deep. They aren't that thick. His screams would carry. And eventually, people would get irritated. Cops would be called. And others, others would come. And I mean, like, you get why I couldn't let that happen, right? I am fucking innocent here, but <laughs> who is going to believe me? Of, of course I couldn't explain that to him, this guy, this grieving father. So I just had to make him be quiet just, just for a little while, just so I could think, so I could buy some time. One of the rocks I was laying on was fairly sizable. It was about the size of a big grapefruit. 
but it had nice round edges, nothing sharp or jagged, so it seemed safe enough. I could just knock him out and figure out the next move from there. I run towards the guy and I'm bent over, coming up along the side of the canal. At this point, my eyes are totally used to the dark. I can see that his back is to me. He's still playing with Sheba. I come up over the rise. And he doesn't see me, but Sheba does. And she starts wagging her tail. I charged When I got close enough, I swung the rock and I went to hit him in the back of the head. I mean, I intended to hit him in the back of the head. Just like I grew up watching in TV and saw in movies, you you pop them once in the skull and they fall down. And a few hours later, they wake up with a headache and Bob's your uncle, right? But he must have heard me coming, and he turned right at the last second. And so that rock I was swinging, it smashed like right square in the middle of his face. Between the eyes, right in the center of the nose, and I'm, I'm no doctor, but those kind of cracking and Moist, crunching sounds were were bad. Really super fucking bad. No coming back from it bad. And then he's just laid out on the ground in front of me, just twitching. And Sheba, she's still sitting next to him like a good girl. She's looking right at me and her tail is thump, 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 thumping on the ground. Because I'm still holding this bloody rock, and this dumb bitch thinks that I'm going to throw it for her to fetch. Can you believe this dog? Anyway, not to get bogged down in the details and bore everybody to death, but I dragged the guy and his kid down to a deeper end of the canal, where the water was six, maybe eight feet deep. I stuffed their bodies full of rocks and I sank them. I washed up as best I could in the water and then I found my way back home. Sheba and I were very careful, as careful as could be. We didn't want to run into anybody on the way. And we didn't. It was the one bit of good luck that I had that night. I had the wherewithal to bring the beer can and the girl's phone with me. I smashed them all up and burned them all up, along with Sheba's leash and her collar, which were surprisingly bloody, and of course, my own clothes and shoes. I washed up, I hit myself with bleach, And then, in spirit of full transparency, I panicked like a little bitch for the next 24 hours or so, sat in my closet just huddling before I finally passed out from exhaustion. Not a good memory. And then I woke up, and I went to work. And I came home from work, and I walked Sheba, and I had dinner. And then I went to work. And a few days passed. And then a few more days passed. And no one came around. No one knocked on my door. No one asked me anything. That was three years ago, yesterday. That's what made me think about it. Three 
years. I was so sure. I was convinced I was going to go to jail for life. But nope. Nothing. After a while, I sort of stopped worrying about it. I even dug up that old rock I hid in the backyard. Started using it as a doorstop out in the garage. Although I burned up all the other evidence, for whatever reason, I held on to that rock. I'm not sure why. Times like now, I see it, and it, you know, it weighs on me. I feel bad and all, but shit, what would you have done? Thanks for listening to a very different kind of story at a Scary Home Companion. And please bear in mind, this is not a story about me. I have never been to juvie. I didn't serve nine months in jail. And most certainly have never killed a man with a rock. For the sake of a more realistic delivery, however, I did change the name of the guy's dog to the name of my dog. Thanks for pitching in, Sheba. Find the show and send feedback through social media. We are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, or you can contact us directly at a scary home companion at gmail.com. Join us on Patreon where you get early access to every new episode. Bonus content like minisodes and post-mortem analysis videos. Swag is on the way. Carol, Catherine, Eric, Andy, Monica, and many other fine folks are helping this show grow every month. Act now and I'll even throw in a picture of Sheba. The episode was edited and produced by Jeff Davidson, who will be handling any future legal inquiries on this matter. 
We featured music by Castro with Strange Dog Walk, Maroc with Swing with a Black Dog, Bob Wiseman with Dog on a Leash, and Chelsea Oxendine with the theme music. A Scary Home Companion is a proud member of the Imagineville Podcast Network. <laughs>